you step down into darkness Open oh, my eyes Father, we honor you. We thank you, Kade Bahanas, for the ministry of the word, for transformation taking place within yet seen. Thank you for counsel by your spirit and your word. Thank you because we are making progress daily in sanctification. Those who are justified by faith in you, we who have received the gift of eternal life, the gift of righteousness. It is by this that we reign in life and we are grateful to you. Lord, tonight grant us insight into Amen. your word. Amen. Cause us to grow in grace. Amen. And in the knowledge of you once again. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, welcome everyone and more grace. Welcome um, online family. I must commend you all. Mix LR family, you are consistent. Many of you are consistent and I thank God for you. I want you to know that it's never a waste of time investing in the things of the kingdom. These are eternal realities. And the day we see Jesus face to face, uh, we will see the beauty of these things. More grace to you and I honor you. I thank God for his grace on your lives too. And I consider this a privilege to share again God's word with you this evening. By the grace of God, I'll be sharing on... Uh, Joint hairs with Christ. Joint hairs with Christ. Hallelujah. Romans the 8th chapter. Romans chapter 8. I remember teaching on sonship through the spirit. The realities that we have in Christ Jesus. I remember teaching on the sanctifying work. All right. Of the Holy Spirit. The saving and the sanctifying work of the spirit. But what I want to do this evening quickly within the ambit of the time that we would have together is to teach on joint heads with Christ. Now we have read, right, from Romans chapter 8. What I will do now is to just give you a little summary here. Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, and you know already that when you see therefore, it means that there was a discourse already, right, and it's trying to bring, um, right, accurate conclusion to it. Here it says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, not to the earthly nature that is apart from God. We are debtors not to the human nature that is not subject all right, to the government of God. Rather, we are debtors to the spirit. We are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Rather, we are debtors to the spirit. For if we live according to the flesh, the Bible says we will die. But if we, by the spirit, put to death the deeds of the body, we will live. So we said that the same Holy Spirit that convicts us of sin, leads us into regeneration, 
justifies us is that same Holy Spirit that continues the work in us because God is able to not only will through us but to do of his good player. So it is the Holy Spirit who is also the seal, all right, of our inheritance as God's purchased possession. And that means that is the down payment, a sign that is the seal. The Holy Spirit is a seal of our justification. It's the one that makes us know that we will be saved in the end. Why? Because what is started in us he is able to finish. Now, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, as many who are subjected, as many who are willingly submitted, as many who have surrendered, all right, to the Holy Spirit, who are obedient to the gospel. Hearing the gospel is not the same as obedience to the gospel. The two of them are not the same. He says, as many who are led by the Spirit of God, these ones are the sons of God. As many who the Spirit continues to lead into sanctification. As many who the Spirit of God continues to convict of sin. And leads them to repentance and confession. And living right. And living to honor God. And living by the word. And hungering and thirsting after righteousness. All these are operations all right, of the new life and the spirit life that we have in Christ Jesus. Now that said, we also see verse 15. He says, For you did not receive. The spirit of bondage again to fear. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. We said that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. It's the one who witnesses with our spirit. He bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. Meaning that we now have rights and responsibilities. You don't separate them. We have rights and we have responsibilities. A son does not only have rights, he has responsibilities. A son does not only have responsibilities, he has rights. So we have both rights and responsibilities as children of God and as sons of God. Then he says, if, our, if children, then yes. And so this is where we are today by the grace of God. Verse number 17. Romans 8 verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Do you see that? If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So let's quickly try to see. All right. Joint heirs with Christ. Now, that's what you see. Verse 16 says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Meaning... Even if a preacher doesn't tell you, believe it, try your best to believe. There is a witness in the heart of everybody who has received the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. You just know that you know that you know in your knower. You may not be able to explain it, but you just have that filial connection within. The Holy Spirit imprints it in your spirit that yes, you are a child of God. You are not in doubt. You are sure that you are saved and you are a child of God. Now he says... If children, look at that word, if children, then heirs. You know, Paul was a lawyer, so a uh, quite logical statement here. He says, if children, then heirs. If children, then heirs. All right? And then he says, not only heirs, so we have children. All right? In, pre in the preceding verse, he says sons. Now he says children. Not only children, he now says joint heirs. So we have sons, we have children. We have heirs, and then we have joint heirs with Christ. Somebody say, I'm a joint heir with Christ. I'm a joint so, with Christ. that's not the only thing we actually see. We see children, we see heirs, we see heirs of God, and we see joint heirs, all right, with Christ. Now, this is what we are going to do. Very quickly, I will show you. So, what when you say someone is a heir, who is an heir? Who is an heir? Who is an heir, according to scripture? An heir is a person that is legally entitled to the property and the possession of an estate. An heir is a person that is legally entitled to a property or a possession property and the possession of an estate. That's who an heir is. 
All right, in the Greek is the word kleronomos, and it means one who receives by lot, one who receives an allotted portion, one who has acquired a portion allotted to him, or we can call it an inheritor. That's an heir. An inheritor. That's an heir. Somebody who inherits something. Now, that already shows you. All right. I remember many years ago, I read a book uh, that blessed me. Uh, the title of the book was uh, Sit, Walk, Stand by Watchman Nee. All right. And then he said something very striking that the Christian life does not begin with doing, the Christian life begins with resting. The Christian life begins from sitting. We begin from a position of rest, not a position of works. We begin from a position of rest, meaning as I'm seated on this chair now, all right, what I'm doing is I'm resting my weight, is that true? On a chair, I'm resting my weight on it. If I say I, I trust this chair and I don't sit on it, I don't trust it. So the old weight, the work is on the chair. Mine is to just come and sit. That's what the Christian life is. We begin from resting. Why? Because the Father already did the work through the Son and by the Spirit. Follow me now. Are you following? Yes. We begin from rest. Why? Because the Father already did the work by the Son through the Spirit. We begin from rest because the Father already did the work by the Son through the Spirit. That's why we are resting. So we begin from a resting state. I know that religion has said, no, you should begin from working. It, it looks nice, but you will notice that every religion apart from Christ, faith in Christ, living union with Christ, always emphasize works and never talks about the work of God. Why? Because religion is still, listen, man-made religion is a work of the flesh. Are you learning something? Yes, man-made religion, all right, is a work of the flesh. Man-made religion is man's attempt to reach God. True religion, undefiled religion, biblical Christianity, is God's attempt to reach man. So, religion by man, is an attempt by man who is finite to try to enter into relationship and receive the approval of an infinite God. But true religion, biblical Christianity, actually says, no, you are not the one trying to reach God. You do not have the capacity in yourself because if God were to judge iniquity, none of us can stand. You cannot end a lottery or win a right to say, God has scored a point with you, you must accept me. No, true Christianity is God being revealed through Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, in reaching man in his quagmire, staying with him, washing him, and then bringing him, bringing him out from sin to live in the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Are you following? Yes. Now, so, a, a heir, an heir is an inheritor. Don't forget. While the Holy Spirit already brings to us that assurance within our hearts, that internal witness that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. You see, we must always remind ourselves of this thing because they are faithful saints. Salvation is the gift of God to man through Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice. If we believe in him, we will be saved. If we don't believe in him, we will be damned. Why? Because there are only two kinds of persons, the saved and the unsaved. The believing and the unbelieving. The godly and the ungodly. The righteous and the unrighteous. The justified and the condemned. Are you seeing that now? Yes, Alright. So that's who an heir is. An heir did not work to accumulate inheritance and wealth. When the Bible says you are heir, you did not work to accumulate it. Wow. It's a privilege. He says, and hair, number one, hairs of God. Wow. So that means that, listen, don't forget this. This will bless you. Everything that we receive as children of God in Christ, 
is not a function of our capacity in our own selves. You know what the writer of one of the New Testament writers said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. There is nothing good in human nature apart from God. It's all rebellion. It's all the oppression of the children of disobedience. Because a man that is in the flesh cannot please God. But you see, what happened is that in Christ, we now receive what we couldn't labor to get. So, and here is just like saying, let's look for a rich man. Give me the name of one very rich man. Maybe, okay, let's say Jeff Bezos, right? I mean, financially. Jeff Bezos. Amazon, right? All right, he's my guy, he's my friend. If he's Amazon, he's my friend. Now, Jeff Bezos, going on the street one day, and just looks at a young boy, maybe hawking, and feels, oh, this boy is hawking. Only God knows what he will eat tonight. And then he brings the boy, right? And then he brings him in his maybe limousine or thereabouts or his car. And then he says, you know what? I'm adopting this boy. Wow. I'm adopting him. Do you know what that means? According to this scripture, that boy is not only to be grateful that he's the son of Jeff Bezos. He should also be grateful because if he has understanding of the law, he knows that all that Jeff Bezos has is his own. Ah! Somebody say automatic. <laughs> it's his own. You mean I have, sir, sir, you mean I have access. And you know, that's, that's, that's what, for example, that's what you see in the story of the prodigal son, right? Two sons, one father. Do you notice? Two sons, one father. One was functioning by works. How do we know? He told his father, the elder one, he said to his father, I've been working all these years. Uh -uh, and you are not pleased. You couldn't say, okay, kill a cow for me. But that one just took it and went riotous living, even though it is not approved in scripture. But the Bible makes us to understand that the father actually told that boy, he said, you've always had these things. What is it to you to just ask and they will give it to you? But he felt, no, I should, I should score a point. Maybe I've not attained to that level of approval before my father. Listen, because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you have received the approval of God in Christ. Are you following? Because listen, you see, the essence of discipleship is union with Christ. Is that true? That's the basis. That's the foundation. That's the goal. That's everything. The essence of discipleship is union with Christ. And the beauty of this union is that we have the privilege to have access to all that Christ has access to. Say what they say, all. All. Yes, sir. Now, again, uh, just to bring a balance so that people people following or who may later listen are clear about what we're talking about. Now, we understand what, what is called the incommunicable attributes of God. For example, that Christ has access does not mean that you are a member of the Godhead. You are not a member of the Godhead. The Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Christ is the only begotten. He is the first begotten among many brethren. So don't think that you will ever attain unto omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. No. Do you see that? But the communicable attributes of God, the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestation of the power of God, and every other benefits that accrue to everyone who put their faith in Christ accrues to you. You have it. Glory to God. Mm. All right. So, and he did not work to accumulate the inheritance and the wealth. And he is one who receives. Now, you see, when we were in secondary school, there is what we call, I don't know if you did it in class, there's what is called simple interest and compound interest. Are you following? You know, I, I want to be like Jesus in my preaching. Jesus would always use day-to-day -day things, is that correct, to teach the people. Why? Because if your people cannot understand what you are saying, you are a weak teacher. Do you see? Now, all right, simple interest, compound interest. Now, there is what we call principal times rate times time over 100. That's how you calculate SR. Are you, are you following me? 
not SIU, it's simple interest. Are you following me now? Now, when you talk about compound interest, what we are saying is that we are not only considering the income and all that, we are looking at duration. For example, should I give you an example? Uh, stocks, right? Is that correct? Shares. You know, as you give it more years, what happens? Hello? What happens? It compounds. We can use the word, right? It accumulates. Is that true? Now, I want, I want to say something that will inspire you. The compound interest of the believer <laughs> is superior to what it can, com it, it can completely enjoy in time. You know why? The one who is giving the interest, the one who is giving the benefits is eternal. You know what that means? Because God transcends time, no matter what we spend of the riches of his grace in time, we cannot get to a, a quarter of what God can give us. So when we say compound interest, now compare com compound interest to that which is eternal. How do you measure it? Are you following? Yes, sir. That's it. And here is one who receives a compounded portion as allotted by the law upon the death of the benefactor. Bringing another point here. And here is one who receives a compounded portion. Do you see that? As allotted by the law upon the death of the benefactor. Hmm. Just like that covenant will not be activated until the death of the testator. Here he says, one who receives a compounded portion as allotted by the law upon the death of the benefactor. Simply put, immediately the benefactor dies. What happens, sir? He, the heir can now what? Receive or take over. Can we use the word now? All right? Can, he can take over. All right? Uh, but, you know, for the sake of clarity, our generation, you have to explain everything. When I mean take over, I don't mean take over like apart from the benefactor. I'm talking about in earthly parlance now. When the benefactor dies, now the child, all right, or the heir, has the opportunity to the will. Is that correct? And then they will read the will and say, uh, Larry shall now have $45 billion of his father. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But you see, the God that you serve owns the cattle on a thousand years. Hmm. But you see, in this context, the benefactor, now you need to write this, this is less. In this context, the benefactor does not die. It is the beneficiary that dies. Ayah, <laughs> uh, thank you, Lord. The benefactor does not die. The one who gave you all that you will ever require in Christ, he doesn't die. You who is receiving me one day in time, you will die. As you breathe your last on earth, you will breathe your first in eternity. Mm. So the benefactor does not. You need to. You need to. You need to tweet this. My benefactor, no, they die. The beneficiary may rest for a while because when the child of God dies, he sleeps, and I'm not talking so sleep like the Mormons and others teach. No, he sleeps. He rests. It's a transition from time into eternity to continue at a greater dimension. Somebody say a greater dimension. I'm not talking of the third dimension. This is a higher dimension than that. A greater dimension. Why? Because now we will see him face to face. We'll get there, the beautific vision. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So God does not die, but the beneficiary in time, all right? Because the creation is languishing under the whiplash, all right, of the consequences of the fall. And so... Whether we like it or not, absent in the body present with the Lord, the body will die someday. But we will re remove this suit, this earthly suit, and then we would have glorified bodies. Praise God. All right, so there are things to note. Number one, point to note, all believers are heirs of God. That's what we see in verse number 17. 
and if children, then heirs, heirs of God. Number one, all believers are heirs of God. Please say with me, all believers, all believers are heirs of God. Heirs yes, of God. all believers are heirs of God. What does that mean? All believers are heirs of God. It means God is our source and our sustainer in Christ. In Nigerian um, national anthem, we sing, O God of creation. So in a way, God is actually the father of creation. Is that true? You see, God is father on many levels. God is father of creation. Is that true? Are you following? Yes, sir. God is also father of spirits. Is that correct? God is also the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Listen, God is also my father and your father. My God and your God. So, all believers are what, sir? Heirs of God. God, another thing to note with respect to us, all right, being heirs of God, is that God is the source of every blessing in our lives. Psalm 50 and verse 10. Psalm 50 and verse 10. God, please say with me, God, God. is the source of every blessing in my life. Every blessing. If it's a blessing, then it is God. Psalm 50 and verse 10. Now, this is a psalm that speaks about God as the supreme and the righteous judge, the impartial judge. In Psalm 50 and verse number 10, he says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. Wow! Every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. What does that mean? God is the source. If you are an heir of God, you are privileged to be a partaker of the riches of God's grace, of the beauty of His goodness, of the demonstration of His power to heal, to save, to deliver even to the uttermost. We are heirs of God. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We are heirs of the Father, we are joint heirs with the Son, amen. We are children of the kingdom, we are family, 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 we are one. Titus chapter 3 and verse 7, that, because what we see in verse 6, it says, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus our Savior. What was he talking about? The washing of regeneration, all right, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. He says that having been justified by his grace, hallelujah, Amen. having been declared righteous, not guilty, discharged and acquitted, we who were on the death row, he says by his grace, we should become that's what we should become. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. He says here that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Oh my God. And he calls it a faithful saying. And he says that these things, he wants us to affirm it constantly. So what we are doing now, you know what we are doing? As we are affirming it constantly, we are doing God's will. That's what he says. So that we should be careful to maintain good works. Why? Because what we have is we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now, let me bring an understanding. Because we are heirs of God, all right, we live to please God. Do you get the idea? 
there is a way you can teach justification and you teach it inaccurately and so a Christian can be carnal sensual sinful continuing in all right rebellion against God an affront despising the truths of scripture embracing the promises of the Bible but despising the warnings of the Bible. That's not an accurate way of understanding justification. Do you see that? Yes. But there is a way we can take justification that tells us that although we have been discharged and acquitted, we have peace with God, then it leads us to good works. Why did I say that? As heirs of God, remember, because, don't forget, because we are heirs of God, we will give an account. Is that true? We will give account. So while I'm grateful, that he has saved me when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me. My very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for saving as I'm grateful and I rejoice, Woo, glory to God. As I'm doing that, I'm also conscious that because I'm an heir of God, I will give account someday soon. So it means that as an heir of God, you are to be a steward of all that God has given you in time as you prepare for an eternity with him. Do you see that? So when we preach good works, when we say live right, when we say honor God's word, it's because there is a reward for those who are already heirs before God. Listen, when you stand before God as a child of God, that judgment will not be a judgment unto eternal condemnation. Do you see that? You are not afraid whether you'll be saved or not. No. That judgment is a judgment of reward. And guess what? God will reward his child, his children, according to their works, not according to their dancing. Amen. So we can dance all about justification, but if there is no sanctification, you are not living the accurate Christian life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you getting the idea? That's what we're talking about. Let's make progress. So the Father justifies. Hebrews, turn with me, Hebrews quickly. Chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. I want to show you something here. And this will bless you. Now, <laughs> let me read from verse 1 just to verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. I want to read something to you. God, who had sundry times, because the book of Hebrews talks about the superiority of Christ over the Judaic religious system, over Judaism. Look at what it says here. God, who had sundry times and in diverse manners, spake unto our fathers by the prophets, as in this last day, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir. Do you see that? Is that in your Bible? Do you see verse 2? Yes. Appointed what, sir? Yes. Heir of how many things? All, all things. You can underline that. Heir of all things, through whom he also made the world. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, hallelujah, and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, verse 4. Having become, somebody say become. become. Having become so much better than the angels, as he has, look at that, by inheritance, do you see that again? Obtained, what did he obtain? A more excellent name than they. Wow. So, in verse 2, we see he has appointed, he was appointed heir of all things. And then in verse 4, there is an obtaining of an inheritance. Is that correct? So, there is the appointment of Jesus as heir. Then there is his obtaining of what? An inheritance. And what is that inheritance? A more excellent name than they. How do we know? Philippians 2. Let his mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Who although he was God, 
Told him not robbery to be equal with God. And then he said he led obedience by the things which he suffered. Then he says, submitted himself, all right, to the dealings of God, to the obedience, the death of the cross. And then he says, wherefore, God also, is highly done what, sir? Exalted him. Why? Because as a son, he suffered, he led obedience by the things that he suffered. And then he says, God also has highly exalted him and given him something. What did he give him, sir? A name, authority, to have absolute mastery over all creation. And here he says, more excellent name than they. A name that at that name, every me. Listen, the me that does not bow now will bow later. <laughs> Hello, sir. The me that does not bow now will bow later. So we are heirs of God. Say with me, I'm an heir of God. Glory Amen. to God. That's it. That's it. I'm an heir of God. I need to understand that it is the Father, all right, that justifies us. The, how does the Father justify us? The Father justifies us because, you no, know, the basis for the Father's justification of the sinner. Because the book of Romans tells us, it says that he might be just and the justifier. Meaning God is just in condemning the sinner. And the way he will also be just and the justifier is that Jesus Christ, his son, comes to die. Because the soul that sins must die. But Jesus, according to the law of collective or corporate responsibility, he took our sin upon himself. He who knew no sin became what, sir? Sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. And praise the Lord. So point number one, all believers are what, sir? Heirs of God. Meaning, we are heirs connected to the creator of the heaven and the earth. Because Hebrews 1 also reveals God as maker. Praise the Lord. Number two, quickly. So number one, all believers are heirs of God. Number two, all believers are heirs with Christ. All believers are are heirs with Christ, or we can use the word joint heirs with Christ, if that helps you. And that's what we see again in verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Let me show you what the word joint heirs means. Now, kleronomos is the word for heirs. Joint heirs, the word joint now, joint heirs means sug clernoromos. Now, this is not my father's tongue, my mother tongue, all right, I'm sorry. Sug clernoromos simply means a fellow heir, according to Thea, Thea's definition. A joint heir, one who obtains something assigned to himself with others. A joint participant, a co heir, a participant in common. Held together with meaning, we being heirs of God is only made possible because we are fellow heirs with Christ. Hello. How do I explain this now? The reason why we have, there's what we call stem and branch. Is that true? Yes. Which is superior, stem or branch? Stem. Stem. In fact, in the plant world, there is what we call stomata, lenticel, and the bark. Right? It's just like saying there is nucleus. Are you following? Yes. Or we can even say there is chlorophyll. Do you remember the green pigment? That pigment that makes plant, do you see? So there is the nucleus. If we want to go the way of biology, we will say there is cytosol. Right? Cell, tissue, organ, system and organism if you want to go tadpole you say there is zygote is that correct sorry human being you say there is fetus there is and then you're right developmental stages if it's maybe the butterfly or the housefly you will say egg larva pupa an adult do you see so what we have is that jesus jesus is divine we are not divine amen, amen. understand it because there are many Christians who think that because we understand new creation realities, we can live independent of Christ. Listen, there is no life in God apart from Christ. 
That's why Jesus did not say, I've come to show you the way. He said, I am the way, the, way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father. Do you see that? Except by me. Christianity in isolation with Christ is not Christianity. You cannot be isolated from Christ doing your own thing and say, well, no. Why? He is divine. We are the branches. Listen, one can never be discarded. One can walk away. You know, Jesus cannot walk away from the Father. Hello? Because it's a mystical union. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Or the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And there are three that bear record on earth. And the same are green one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Monotheism. Not polytheism. Are you following that? Yes, sir. So, Jesus is the stem. Alright? He is the vine. He is the superior hair. It is because of him that we have the opportunity to call God Abba Father. Why? It was when he left and he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made Lord and Christ, that he could ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit. You know Jesus said it. Is that true? He said, when I leave, I will, I will pray the Father and he will send you the Holy Ghost. And in Luke 24, 49, he said, starry in the city of Jerusalem. Until he be endued with power from on high. Meaning that the baptism, Acts 1, 8. You know, the disciples were asking him, Master, will you again at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said, it is not given to you to know the time the, with, the power, with the Father has put in his own hands. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And in John, Jesus was showing us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then he says, it is expedient for you that I... Go away, because if I do not go, the comforter will not come. He says, but when I leave, if I go, he will be able to come. Meaning that as a result of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, now he has ascended to heaven. He is declared Lord and Christ. So the proof that Jesus was coronated Lord and Christ, and the proof that his sacrifice was accepted before the Father is the release of the Spirit. Are you following? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the indwelling Spirit showing us that our ah, Jesus' high priestly ministry continues, it is valid, and it is received and accepted all right, by the Father. So we are heirs of God, and then we are heirs with Christ. So Christ is the chief heir we only have the privilege we are not superior to christ you know sometimes we say funny things let me just clear the air concerning this the christian is not christ amen, amen. you know many times we say things like i'm christ listen listen i like your zeal and i appreciate all right your zeal but you are not christ in antioch the heathen the unbelievers all right, they call the believers little Christ. Is that true? Yes. Meaning, ah, these guys, by their manner of life, they believe they're behaving like their master Jesus. All right, that's correct. But that does not mean they are Christ, they are not Christ. Tell your neighbor, Christ is one. Christ is one. We, we. hello, we. tell your neighbor, Christ is one. Christ is one. We, we are recipients of his life. So it's not like all of us, we are Christ. Mm -mm. We are not Christ. And I've heard people quote scriptures out of context. You know when the Bible says, Saviors shall arise. Right? And um, out of uh, the mount of Jacob, and they shall judge the mountain of Israel and all that. Meaning, Christians are the saviors. We are not the saviors. There is only one savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus said in John 10, 9, He said, I am the door. He didn't say there are many doors. Or let's say, well, the word D, is a definite article, right? It's specific. There may be other dogs, but listen. Muhammad is not the dog. Ogun is not the dog. Buddha is not the dog. Jesus said, Jesus was clear. I love Jesus. He's, a, he's the greatest teacher. He said, I am the dog. If by me any man shall enter, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pastor. Do you know what that means? Then he now said, anybody who tries to enter by jumping through the window, you are an illegal occupant. You <laughs> Are you following? Yes. Mm. 
So we are not Christ. We are to be Christ-like, all right? But we are not Christ. He alone is Christ. What we have received is the life of Christ and then to now live like him, but we are not him alone. Do you see that? Do you understand what we're talking about now? All right. So Jesus is the main head and we share not only in his life, we share in his inheritance. Ah, can somebody thank, thank God and say thank you, Jesus? Ah, thank you that you are allowing us to share in your inheritance. Because again, if he says he's not giving us, what shall we do? So you just make it to heaven. That's okay. At least your mates are in hell. But no, he says, come my brethren. The Bible calls him in the book of Hebrew, the captain of our salvation. The captain of our salvation. Bringing many sons into glory. That's the goal. In bringing many sons into glory. And he said, our captain cannot miss root. <laughs> Hello. We say, if I follow Jesus, will I not be lost? You cannot be lost if you are following Jesus. The captain. Somebody say, Amen. amen. You can't be lost. I don't know about the others, but I know if Jesus is leading you, you cannot. Amen. Matthew chapter 28. Look at what he says. In verse number 18. Now, this is the great commission. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, What did he say? All authority. Somebody say, All authority. All authority. Has been given hi, to me in heaven and on earth. Kai. There are some scriptures that make me want to jump up. He says all authority. Hello, sir. When he says all, please, what is all? Everything. All means all, Abby. All means everything. Uh, there is no, uh, for example, all right, this, for example now, this is my post-it, all right, card. And, and then you now say, ask me to give it to you now. Now, you want me to give it to you, if I, listen, if I give you this, yeah, withholding this, have I given you everything? No. No. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try again. Let's be sure. What if I remove two? two? And I said, take. Ah, I've tried for you. Take. Have I given you everything? No. no. All right, okay. All right. Now, so that there's no argument. What if I give you this? Have I given you everything? No. no. What if I give you this? And I said, well, at least let me have something. I'm human being too. Have I given you everything? No. You know, we parents, you want to tell your child, you say, I've given you all the money I have, you've taken it, but you know it's a lie. <laughs> Just see all the money I've allocated for you. Don't see all the money you have because if Jesus comes now. <laughs> all right. Now, okay. That's on the light time. But again, okay, what if he gives you this? What if this is what he gave Jesus? So yeah, and you too. In case, in case you want to be stubborn. Oh, yeah, take. Have I given you everything? No. Hello? Okay, what if he gives you this? Have I given you everything? As long as the father withholds anything from the son, he didn't give him all. <laughs> Jesus, now, I know. There's something I know about Jesus. And when I see Jesus, I'll first hug him and I'll, and I'll ask him if what I said today is true. When you get to heaven, you go and ask. Maybe before I get there, after whichever one. <laughs> but when you get to heaven, ask him. Alright, ask him. Sorry, uh, this this was he said that what you said Matthew 28, 18, uh, 18, that all authority has been given. Is it true? Then you'll be surprised. He will tell you, I it's true. <laughs> ah, it's true. The, the guy he doesn't uh, doesn't really like he's, this, he said the truth on that one. He said the truth. When Jesus says all authority has been given to me, sir, you need to understand that he's talking about the scope of his influence. Hello. Hello. Are you following me? The scope of his influence. That means it is not some authority. It is not physical authority. It's not just spiritual authority. It's not 80%. It's not 99.8. And then you want to quickly wrap it up. Mm. It's not 99.999. Mm -mm -mm. It is what? All authority. Remember that the scripture makes us to understand concerning demonology. I've taught you this. The Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil cometh in your midst with great fury. Knowing that his time is short, then he begins to steal, kill, and destroy. Is that correct? But he says it's like a roaring lion, but it's not a roaring lion. Is that true? Yes. Now, do you know what that means? That means that Satan is not a legal occupant on the face of the earth because earth was not designed for Lucifer. 
Hello? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. The only place Satan is a legal occupant is hell. Hello? Uh, mm-hmm. Now, that means, now hear this. Even an unbeliever, an unbeliever who is not saved, has legality on earth more than Satan. Yes. <laughs> ah. Now, how much more the one who has the indwelling spirit? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You think Jesus would have rose from the dead if the spirit did not raise him? He would not have. But because his sacrifice was accepted and all authority was given to him. And the one, you see, the, the grave could not hold him. And that's why when he got there, he said, Death, where is your sting? Oh, grave. Where is your victory? Because all authority, sir. I'm sure when Jesus walked out, he walked out triumphantly. Is that true? Yes, sir. How do we know? Colossians 2 14. Blotting out. Ah, yeah. The handwriting of ordinances. That was written against us. Is that true? Contrary to us, taking it out of his way and nailing it to his cross, having spoiled principality and power, he made an open show of them triumphing. Hallelujah. I'm a triumphant Christian, sir. Triumphing over them in it. I wrote, I explained these things in my book, Striving for the Mastery. Triumphing over them in it. That means that, listen. As far as God and Christ and the Holy Spirit are concerned, you are a victor. Hello? Your circumstances may say contrary. But you see, the beautiful thing about it is that whatever happens to you that is contrary to God's will in time is not the end. Mm -mm. Are you following? Why? Because anything in time is temporal. Anything in time is temporal. If Jesus had all authority, only on earth is limited. But remember, he rose. Is that true? Yes. And the body he rose with is an eternal body. Is that true? Is that same body that we will receive when we see him face to face? Is that correct now? That means that since he has been coronated Lord and Christ with an eternal nature, undying, incorruptible, and now he has all authority. Do you see that? It means that because we are connected to him, hello, we are joint heirs to him. In many ways, we can take of what he has and use it for his glory. Amen. Amen. Can I explain that a little? What Christ has is for the believer to benefit. Amen. Amen. You see, I know there are those who say Christianity is not about, it's not about uh, prayer. Is not a, we are doing revival under by the grace of God. Today is day 60. Amen. Amen. Are you not excited? It's not about asking God for things. Prayer is not about asking God for things. And that's the only thing they are mad about prayer. That's imbalance. In prayer, you can ask God for things. Listen, if you cannot ask God for things, why will God say he owes the cartoon of the thousand is? Why is he telling us about things? Hello? You can ask him for things. Yes, sir. Material things. Uh-huh. You can. Why? You are heads of God for Christ's sake. You can ask him for things. Listen, God is a responsible and a responsive father. He will not turn you down. Amen. Amen. All right. He has all authority. All authority is his. He's the main head. We share in his inheritance. Meaning, Jesus healed the sick. We too can pray and believe in his word and minister healing to the sick to glorify. Listen, now, this is key. Don't think because you have inheritance, meaning I can squander it. It doesn't matter. It, no matter how much I use it, it cannot finish. Wait. That's not the mindset of sons. That's the mindset of hirelings. A hireling does not really care for the sheep. A hireling does not really care for the master. He just wants to earn his salary and walk away. No. A son has a mindset that, uh -uh, I need to be careful how I use my father's things. Do you see that? That's what we're talking about. That's why the anointing is not for sale. Simon the sorcerer came and then he said, Hey, let me drop some change now. Give it this Holy Ghost stuff that you're giving people. The apostles say your money perish with you. You think you can buy the gift of God with some with some naira and cobble? No. But you see, the inheritance of Christ, by virtue of our faith and trust and surrender and union with Him, has become our own. Do you know what that means? That means that all that Christ has, we receive by faith. To glorify God. Please say with me, all that Christ has, all that Christ has we, receive we receive 
by faith to glorify God. Yes, because we are heirs of Christ. Ephesians 1.22. Quickly, Ephesians 1.22. Are you learning something now? Are you learning something? Yes. And he put all things. Hey, hey, hey. Let me read from verse 20. Verse 20. Uh, no. Let me just read from verse 15. To get the context right. More grace, everybody. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to make, sorry, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In the, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? There are many names for power. There is Iskus, there is Kratos, there is Dunamis. All of them are used in this prayer. Toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Now the working of his mighty power is what is revealed here now. He says, which he walked in Christ when he raised him, hallelujah, from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Now this is where we are going. He raised him up and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above. I don't think that far above is merely physical distance. I think it's more about spiritual ranking and authority. Hello. Are you following? Yes. Because truly there is spiritual ranking scripturally. And what I mean by that is the Godhead first. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And then man. Actually. Then the angels. Then, alright, like that. That's why you will hear the scripture says, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. You made him a little lower than Elohim. The angel there is not Angelion. It's not Angelus. It's not Angel Michael. It's what? Sir? Elohim. The Godhead. Are you following? All right. So, you see. Far above all principality. Elosa. He didn't say far above principality. He said far above all principality. Why? Because he has all authority. So it is only the one that has all authority that can be far above all principality. If you have some authority, you are far above some principality. If you have a few authority, you are far above a few principality. But if you have all authority, you are far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named in this world, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. Meaning the dominion of Christ is in all realms, in all stages, in every dimension, and for all eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. The dominion of Christ does not end with a dispensation. He continues eternally. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 22 says, And he put all things under his feet, gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. We are his body. The fullness of him that fills all in all. Wow. Now Christ is the head of all principalities. Is that true? He now says we are his body. Hello, sir. If Christ is the head and we are his body, so are we to be slaves to darkness? No. No. Why? He's the head. We are the body. And listen, where the head goes, the body goes. Meaning where our head is, that's where... Mm -hmm. That's... All things are in subjection to the Son. In fact, the Bible makes us to understand that the Father has committed all judgment to the Son. Amen. Amen. The Father has given him judgment. Say you, go ahead. Meaning when I stand before Jesus, A to age you are still the same. The Lamb of Calvary is seated on the throne. And forever and ever you reign. You will return and I will see you face to face. When I stand before him, Oh, I want to see, look upon his face. When I stand before him, <laughs> there would be that joy unspeakable and full of glory. By now, I will hug him. I will, I will find a way to, I will try. 
You know why? I'm too grateful. The Lamb of God. The Son of God is lifted high. 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 Oh, wonderful and glorious Jesus. The Son of God is lifted high. Hi, you see. That's why Paul was writing. And he got to one point in his letter. He said, oh, the depth. Ah. <laughs> How unsearchable are his ways? How unsearchable are his riches? And his ways past finding out. He said, oh, the depth of the riches of both the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, my spirit is fire. It's because of him. His righteousness. Is now our own. His peace is now our own. His joy is now our own. His glory is now our own. That's why in John 17 he was praying. He said, The glory that I had with you before the world began, he said, Them to, them to bring them in. Was interceded for us. All right. That's what you see in John. John 14, please. Oh, thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Lord, and forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Bless you, Lord, you are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are. Hey, Alleluia. Now, John 14, look at verse number 21. I want to read something about the indwelling of the Father and of the Son. I begin from verse 19. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Hallelujah. I see him. Because I live, you will live also. Wow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Yeah, yeah. Because I live, you will live also. What an assurance. <laughs> because I live, thank God you rose again. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father. Hey, that day, you will know that I am in, in my Father. And you in me, and I in you. is a mystical union. I am in my Father. Then you, have you seen onions before? Onions, right? You know, there is something inside the nucleus, one whitish stuff. He says, you will know that me, I'm in my father. Then you now. Mm -hmm. He who has my commandments, and this is where I'm going now, keeps and keeps them. Because some Christians say, you don't need to keep no commandment. Just believe. What do you mean believe? What is belief? To believe means to keep believing. And to keep believing means to live according to the commandments of God. Why? Because Jesus said, the two greatest commandments is, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, and all your soul, and all your mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. He said, upon this and the law, and the prophets. How do you love, how do you say you love the Lord and you don't love Bible study? How will you do his will? Because the proof that you love him is that you obey him. If you obey me, he says, if you love me, then you obey me. And how can I obey him if I don't know his will? And how will I know his will if I don't do Bible study? Meaning, in ancient times, they used to weigh the move of God in revival by attendance of prayer meetings. Say people are praying. But in our own time, the way you weigh revival is attendance of Bible study. Are you following? When you see people loving the word, the strict scripture, the truth, know that there is a revival. Because it is impossible to be accurately taught the truth and your soul will not be set ablaze. Your prayer life will change. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? 
and he who loves me, oh, it is, oh God, he who has my commandments and keeps them, and keeps them, not just he who has them, but he who has them and keeps them, he says, it is he who loves me, hello sir, so you can sing, I love you Lord, for your mercy never fail me, all my days, you see, as you, after singing it, Jesus is checking, meaning your songs of love to Jesus that you have concocted, no matter how nice it sounds, the symphony, if you are not living in obedience to him, it's all cacophony. The falsetto of a false life huh, is cacophony in the ears of God. See what he says here. He who has them and keeps them. Some don't even have them. But he says he who has and then keeps them. Meaning does them, not keeps in the shell, but does it. He says it is he who loves me. And he who loves me, hallelujah, will be loved by my father. And I will love him. Eh? Yes, sir. I thought Jesus already loves you. Amen. Amen. Hello. Hi. But he said, are we what? Sir? Are we the word will means if you do the Abi, I do you see it there. It means even Jesus too responds to love. He responds to obedience. If he, he said, if you do my commandments, ah, I will love you. Uh uh. Uh huh. Not only that, he says, and manifest myself to him. Hey, meaning it is not everybody that will see Jesus. It's not everybody that can see Jesus. Remember, until he broke the bread to them, those who were walking with him on the way to Emmaus. This Jesus can be your neighbor and you don't see him. In fact, the religious guys, they chased Jesus out of their territory because he casted out devils and sent them into the swans. Do you remember? And they, cast, they, they casted out Jesus. Jesus casted out their devils, but for their business and their trade, their economy, they casted out Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it is possible for you to be singing in the temple and be bowing down and be worshiping, whereas Jesus is outside, walking by in the triumphal entry and saying, why are those making noise? Don't you see we are praying to the Messiah and the Messiah is passing by? <laughs> Is somebody may God open your eyes? All right, that's, I know some of you go use it somewhere. Now. You got something. All right, so you see, manifest myself to Him. So all believers, number one, are heirs of God. Number two, we are heirs of Christ. Just another scripture, Second Corinthians. Quickly, Second Corinthians. Look at look at chapter twelve. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Look at verse nine and ten. And He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmity, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For where I am weak, I am strong. He's showing you a consciousness that, listen, as long as my life is lived in obedience to him, it doesn't matter what I go through, whether it is reproach, in need, in infirmity, in persecution, in distress, as long as it is for Christ's sake, I'm okay. That's biblical sonship. That's biblical Christianity. Hallelujah. So we are heirs. Number three, all believers are heirs of suffering. And that's why I read that to, to wet the ground. All believers are what, sir? Heirs of suffering. Mm. Get me my book, Christians and Suffering, quickly. That's it. Your hand is on it. Hello. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. We need to show them. Sometimes we just need to let people know. All right, some of these things. Christians and suffering. Making a sense of the trials of your faith in God. All right. Now, I could, I could read to you the widow and, his, and her seven sons. Yeah, I just opened it and you opened it quickly. Sinforosa, a widow and her seven sons were commanded by the emperor Trajan to sacrifice to hidden deities. She was carried to the temple of Hercules, scorched and hung up for some time by the hair of her head. When being taken down, a large stone was fastened to her neck. And she was thrown into the river where she expired, meaning where she died. With respect to her seven sons, they were fasting to seven posts, being drawn up by pulleys until their limbs were dislocated. There was one, Eugenius. These tortures not affecting their resolution. They were martyred by stabbing. Except Eugenius, one of them, the youngest, who was sawed asunder. Mm. Are you following? What about William Tyndale? What about Felicitatis? There are so many. Go and read this book, uh, Fox's Book of Matters, and you'll be surprised. You weep. 
I've read that book only twice, but every time I've read it, if I should sit to read it, maybe for a few hours, I would weep. Because these people went through a lot. Why? Because they are heads. Somebody say yes. Because I know, I know what you're thinking is, Hallelujah, I'm an heir. He has given me all things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to show me something? Oh, all right. If we are to use today's prosperity, where's my book? Flick out to flames. If we are to use today's prosperity and materialistic sermons to judge the early church, especially Christ and his apostles, we may say things such as this. Hmm. Are you sure you want to see the following points I'm about to list? Stephen was not very anointed with an unusual grace for favor. If he was, if he was, who would dare touch him? Stephen was being stoned to death, yet he was seeing Jesus standing. Think about it. Paul the apostle wasn't carrying is a heavy grace for prosperity. If he had it, his ministry will not be that broke in imprisonment, in fasting, suffering, in suffering, in persecution. Taking offering from bed. Listen, Paul was taking offering from brethren in Macedonia and Philippi. In prison today, being flogged tomorrow, let down of the basket the next day, persecution every day, crucifixion the next year. No, my God cannot allow anyone to touch me. He wants me to be happy and so great. The early church said, ah, how now? How could they be scattered abroad because of persecution? No way. There is a grace of thought not my anointed. My papa's expensive handkerchief and the mantle works mightily. In fact, only three of us could sow to tap into that anointing for preservation and strange wealth. But don't ask me for quick two Kesha. Are you following? <laughs> You didn't get this book. Even Jesus, how could a man like that suffer? Does he not understand the Abrahamic covenant? Kai, no. what theology is this that he's talking about suffering to his brethren? The one who will die and rise again. Why should he talk about suffering? Jesus had suffered and I will never suffer since Jesus suffered. Me, I no go suffer. I no go beg for. Nowhere in the Bible did Jesus say I will suffer. Especially if you check the epistles of Paul. Hallelujah. Did I hear glory? glory. Hello. John 16, 33. In this world, you will face tribulation. But be of good cheer. <laughs> Romans 8, 18. Let's, let's be sure. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's where we are. <laughs> That's where we are. Verse 17 ending says, If indeed we suffer with him. Hello. He says, we are yes. He now says, if indeed. Hello. We suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings. Hello? Is he talking to unbelievers here? Mm -hmm. Of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Whether we like it or not, we must be partakers of his suffering if we shall be partakers of his glory. Somebody say glory. glory. So, for example, if somebody says suffering, say, mm. but say glory, glory. Mm. Are you following? If you truly carry this dimension of the presence of God, then the proof will be double-double. You will have everything in excess, including children. It will be in excess. Let's, let's, because, mm, get, get these books. Get, get, get them. Get them. Find a way to get them. Are you following me now? All right. All believers are heirs of suffering. Okay, there's another scripture I referenced in that book. Let's see. First Peter 5.10. Let's confirm it. <laughs> I read here, First Peter chapter five, verse ten. But may the the God of all grace, somebody say grace, grace, who called us to His eternal glory, somebody say glory, glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. <laughs> how many how many faith preachers have you heard preach this Bible verse? Say the truth. That they've preached from here. He says, after you have what, sir? And those who say so far, they were, you know what they say? They say, mark it. He says, so far, they were, look. He didn't say forever. Those people think a while means after six months of your life, then suffering ends. Uh. <laughs> what it means is after you have suffered on net. Listen, no matter how much you earn as a human being, huh? even as a Christian, no matter how comfortable you are, in a way you are still suffering. 
Okay, imagine you're, you're watching your fellow brethren being slaughtered like animals and you think you are not suffering because what happens to one is happening to all. Are you here? Yes, sir. And you say, I'm not suffering. What kind of a Christian are you? Do you not love your brethren? No. Hello? Hello? Uh -huh. After you have suffered what, sir? A while on this earth. Perfect. Perfect. Establish. Strengthen. And said to you, he said, after you have suffered what, sir? A while. So one of the distinguishing marks of God's children is that we share not only the glory of that, but we share in the sufferings of Christ. And that's why the prosperity gospel when I mean prosperity gospel now, I'm not saying God doesn't want you to prosper. But prosperity in the context of you just have more, 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 more. And it's all about you. It's all about you. Even the death of Jesus is all about you. And there is a way you pray the gospel, prosperity gospel. And it looks as if the value Jesus places on you is even higher than the value God places on Jesus. Let's be careful. Man is not the center of salvation. God is. Hello. I'm saying we are too important. God had to send Jesus to die. It's a lie. You are too wretched. God had to send Jesus to die. Do you get the idea? Say, I feel so important. Be careful. Someone said he didn't want heaven without us. Who told you? It had been heaven before we were created. Amen. Hello? Is it when he created man that he became heaven? Yeah. In the beginning, God created what, sir? Is even man that has caused more problems? Before he even created Lucifer, he was like, there's no problem. Are <laughs> you following me? Stop, let's stop making ourselves so powerful. And we are just... Mm -mm -mm. Faith doesn't immune you from suffering. Child of the... Okay, all right, I wrote here. Children of the devil don't share in the sufferings of Christ. They cannot. It's only through children of God that have that ability within. This is an ability. To endure persecution and suffering. Look at Zechariah and his wife. They were barren, but they were serving powerfully in the ministry. Do you know the Bible called them faithful and righteous people? You know, their families, what would they say? Mm, yeah, it's our bank. Some would say, oh, I'm a love in Have you not heard those things before? They may, be, uh, they may even say they are arrogant, they are proud. They think that's how it is. The people may say all kinds of things, but listen. Do you know, in my book, is Glorious Presence. I shared revelations about the Holy Spirit. Beautiful thing, simple but very powerful. One of the things I said was that, do you know that in the entire scripture, where the spirit of glory is mentioned, spirit of glory resting on a person is just once. And that spirit of glory was tied to persecution and intense suffering. He said, when you are going through that, he says, know that the spirit of glory rests on you. So he's calling <laughs> the spirit of glory, finding more expression in the midst of suffering. Are you learning something? Uh -huh. You shall receive power. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Have you ever asked, what is that fire? Go and check your basic dictionary or go on Google. Baptism of fire. Do you know what it means? It means it won't be pleasant. That's what it is. Hello? Hello? Baptism of fire doesn't mean... Oh, that's not baptism of fire. It's fervent zeal and boldness to stand in the face of persecution and say, come what may, we will stand our ground. That's why Peter could stand up and speak boldly, knowing that they are already preparing their chain and their whip. Keep preaching it. <laughs> we suffer for his name's sake. Why? Because that's the sacrifice required for, from us as part of the citizens of his kingdom. We to suffer for his name's sake. Because listen, why should Christ the hair suffer and the branches say no we won't suffer because he has suffered that's that's not it he suffered we too we suffer and we will suffer amen say amen okay i say we will suffer say amen it's not a cause it's not a cause in fact do you know that martyrdom is considered a privilege there is a special crown for martyrs those who were beheaded for christ those who were maimed there is a special crown for them all those Christians that say, eh, that man of God, he just called all his family and his wives and said, all right, all right, now I'm going, now praise God, and then he dies. You may clap and say, this is the best way to live the faith life. It's not true. It doesn't matter how we live. What matters is we all see Jesus face to face. Amen? Because some will live by bomb blast. Dr. Miles, more of blessed memory. They, 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 it wasn't nice. So how we live doesn't really matter. What matters is who we believe. Hello? Because an unbeliever can sleep peacefully and die. It doesn't mean he rested in peace. Mm. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? 
Are you being blessed? That's it. Because the gift of saving faith is given to us by the Spirit. And that gift also comes with the ability to endure suffering. Somebody say ability. ability. Somebody say ability. ability. To endure suffering. Endure. Amen. Alright, one more scripture. Look at Philippians 1.29. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer with him. To you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe to, to believe in him, but to what, sir? To suffer. Somebody said to, to suffer. Somebody said to, to suffer. Somebody said to suffer with him. Do you believe scripture? Do you believe what the Bible says? So do you see that those who believe will suffer? Do you agree now that you will suffer? Say amen if you believe. Alright, so number one, we have seen that believers are what? Heads of God. Number two, heads with Christ. Number three, heads of suffering. Then we will pick up from number four tomorrow um, in our next class, which will be all believers are heads of glory. And that glory is God. God is our greatest inheritance. Are you blessed? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead and thank God. Give him praise and give him glory. Just give him praise and thank him. Thank him that you are an heir. Tobes. Uh, just let's lead us in worship for five minutes. Let's give God praise. We are heads. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for making us heads. We are heads of God. We are heads of Christ. We give you praise, Jesus. We the sons of Amen. Children of the kingdom. Family, family, family. The Lamb of Calvary, she did in majesty, oh, and forever and 